What's up everyone? This is Dr. Webb here. Today, I wanted to talk about five things about the life as a resident, uh, like a typical day in the life of a, of a resident. I wanna go over five things. Number one is what a typical day is like. Number two is responsibilities as a resident. Number three is work-life balance. Number four is work hours. Number five is kind of the pros, advantages of being a resident. There are lots of advantages that I wanted to uh, talk to you guys about. So number one, the typical day in the life. Um, as a resident, it depends on your specialty. Pediatrics, specialties like emergency medicine, some internal medicine, family medicine, you won't have the same hours or typical day as a surgery resident. General surgery resident or neurosurgery resident is gonna work. You're gonna work a lot of hours. Orthopedics, you're gonna work a lot of hours. As a family medicine, you're mostly in clinic, maybe some inpatient, so your hours are not that long. So, but a typical day for me as a resident surgeon in orthopedics typically starts around 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning. I get up, I review or finish review, uh, reviewing cases for the day. Um, majority of my time is spent in the operating room as a upper level resident. I just completed one of my rotations in trauma surgery. So I was one of the chief residents. So majority of my time is not spent in the, uh, in the ER, uh, kind of doing the kind of grunt work. Um, I actually just operate, go to clinic. Uh, so a typical day, 4.30, 5 o'clock, I get up and I review cases for that day. Say for instance, I have three surgeries that day. I try to review the anatomy. I try to I look over the patient's labs and make sure their labs are, are appropriate for surgery, look over their x-rays, and you kind of get a, thought, a uh, process in my head of this is what I'm gonna do once the patient gets in the operating room and gets to sleep. These are the steps I'm gonna take to do this surgery. I'm gonna make this incision. I'm gonna go between these two muscles. I'm gonna remove this nerve out the way. I'm going to uh, put a plate and some screws here. So I go through a thought process in my head and as I'm driving to work, I go over this again. Um, there's no, a lot of people, the techs and the nurses, they say, oh, I'm going to lunch. There's no such thing as that in surgery. You eat when you can. And as a medical student, I was always taught that you should eat every opportunity that you have because you never know when the next opportunity you'll, you'll get to eat. So um, there's no like, oh, you get an hour for lunch here. In surgery, that, that's kind of non-existent. Um, and usually surgery starts around 7 a.m. Before that, I see patients in the hospital. So we have a list of, or a group of patients in the hospital that uh, that are just recovering from surgery or may not need surgery, just antibiotics or pain meds. And uh, we see those patients and then surgery starts around seven o'clock. You may have three surgeries, four surgeries, five surgeries, or it may a day you may have one surgery. So it just depends on how many patients need surgery. And surgeries can go up until four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock, whenever the work gets done. Uh, versus in clinic, internal medicine, pediatrics, you know clinic ends at four o'clock, you may get out of there about six o'clock. So uh, I may be at work tomorrow until 11 o'clock. I don't know. So that's just a, you know, a, a one of the downsides about surgery. After you get off work, which typically six or 7 p.m., um, I go home, I love the workout, and I think that's part of my well-being. It helps me stay sane, so I go to the gym. Um, and I try to get a good, quick 45 minute hour workout. After that, so I spend one to two hours every evening reviewing cases for that day or preparing for cases the next day and just reviewing the patient's charts, their x-rays, coming up with a plan, how I'm going to fix this patient's fracture or how I'm going to perform this particular surgery. And I usually get to bed around 11 p.m. So that's a typical day. Next day, I start it all over. The next is responsibilities as a resident. There are lots of different responsibilities. As a medical student, you get thrown off of the hook for a lot of different things, but as a resident, everything, you're responsible for a lot. I remember as a medical student, I would have maybe two patients that I would have to take care of, uh, maybe three patients when I was in the fourth year, and you have a lot more, a little bit more responsibility. But as a resident, you have 30, 40, 50 patients that you may be responsible for and they're on your service and patients and nurses, the nurses can call you at any point and ask you about a patient. Hey, this patient's having chest pain. 
Um, so you need, you need to know how to work that up. Well, I'm gonna get a chest x-ray EKG. I'm gonna order some cardiac enzymes, uh, make sure this patient's not having a, uh, some ST elevation or a, a um, heart attack, essentially. Um, so responsibilities, there's a research requirement in most residency programs. You have to have a publishable project. I've published um, several times as, since I was a resident, so you have to do that in your off time. Uh, there's journal clubs, which means we meet and talk about different articles that are, are kind of hot in the field of orthopedics. Um, and there's other responsibilities, such as your ACLS, your, your CPR, and that uh, certification that you have to keep up to date with. Um, like I said, you still have to come home and study. So even though you may work 50, 60 hours in that particular week, um, you still have to come home and study because exams basically never end, which I didn't realize until I got into residency that you still have an a, a exam every year while you're a resident. It tests you on concepts in that particular field. So if you are in anesthesia, you have an exam that you take every year and you're graded among your, your colleagues. Um, that our exam is in November of every year. It's an eight hour test. And basically you have to prepare for that on your off time uh, throughout the year. So next, work life, work life balance. I made another video about this, but just to speak on it briefly, I think um, it is hard to find balance. And I think if it comes with time. So first starting off in medical school or first starting off in residency, you may not know how to juggle the responsibilities and everything that you're required to do, but it just takes time to develop and to learn how to have work-life balance. There is life outside of residency. I do a lot of things for fun. I like to go hiking, camping. I like to travel. I went to Europe recently in December. I go to sporting events. I'm going to the Redskins and Cowboys game here in January. So you get vacation, most programs, two to three weeks of vacation a year. That's paid time off. Um, next is work hours. Work hours can, like I said earlier in the video, it depends on your specialty. Pediatrics may have few hours that they require to work. Surgical specialties such as neurosurgery, ENT, orthopedics, plastic surgery. You could be working 80 hours a week, 100 hours a week. It just depends on your particular rotation. And lastly, I think the pros of being a resident, which is what my I enjoy the most, I think number one, you get to do something that you enjoy doing, that's being a doctor and helping people. Number two, you do get paid. You don't get paid as much as you would as once you get done with all of your training, but you do get a paycheck right out of medical school. And some people, for some people, this is their first job, first paycheck. Number three, there are lots of different opportunities to make money kind of uh, as a resident. Uh, you can, what's called moonlighting. You can work in an ER, you can work in a primary care center. Um, you can provide medical coverage for football games, which we do in orthopedic surgery. We get paid for that for each game. Um, it can be anywhere between $75 and $100 an hour to cover a football game. Um, as a resident also in orthopedic surgery, we work one of our rotations is sports medicine. So we worked with the San Antonio Spurs. So I was able to go to the Spurs games and go into the locker rooms, meet the players. When... Um, one of the players was injured in the playoffs. I went into the locker room and got an x-ray of his knee and and um, talked to him about his injury. So that was, that was pretty fun. There are lots of different uh, sponsors who sponsor, like sales reps who sponsors dinners. Um, all of our products that we use in orthopedics, such as our knee implants, our metal trays, our metal uh, plates and screws, there are sales reps who sell those products to us and they're in the operating room with us. So. They tend to take us out to dinner a lot, to dinner a couple times per month, um, just to talk about their products. Um, there's one company who has a private jet that I went on a private jet just to Indiana for a day, just to uh, hang out and do some, uh, do some work out there. So lots of different perks as a resident, but I think most important that you get to do something that you enjoy doing. So there are my five things as a life, as a resident, typical day in the life. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Contact me at overcomingtheoddsbook at gmail.com or hit me up on my website, antoniawebmd.com, if you have any more questions. See you next time. Make sure you guys subscribe to this video, and I'll be publishing, putting out videos at least once a week. So tell all your friends, family, and make sure you share this video. Thank you. See you next time.